Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Reputation to Disgrace. Beloved Father, our text says, He must also have a good reputation with outsiders, so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. 1 Timothy 3, verse 7. This verse is taken from a passage in 1 Timothy where Paul is outlining the characteristics and qualities that an overseer of the ministry should have. He is to be above reproach, faithful to his wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, and not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in the manner worthy of full respect. 1 Timothy 3, 2-4 So many of our leaders in ministry fall short of these standards. And I must count myself among them because my relationship with all of my children have not been the way God desired it to be. But thanks be to God, He is working that out. But I want to focus on this verse of our opening text because the devil has a trap set that many of us miss. The text says, that we should have a good reputation so that we will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Interesting, isn't it? What trap do you think Paul is advising young Timothy about? Obviously one that he had faced in the past. And it has to do with what others think or say about you, in particular your reputation. Now understand, the devil doesn't want to spread good and wholesome things about you, No, he wants to spread lies and slander and sow discord. He wants to slander and accuse you before God and men day and night. So our text is saying, don't give him anything to work with, for he will go from lies to slander, making false statements with the intent of damaging your reputation. And that's the point. The enemy wants to use your reputation to destroy your identity. Help me somebody. He will give you a reputation, deserved or undeserved, that is designed to cancel your identity and your assignment. See, when God created you, he established your identity by your image of him and your purpose first. The main difference between what is created and the creator is that the created must develop into its identity or its purpose, given to it by its creator. Oh, I like that. You and I have to go through life to become what God created us to be. For whatever is created to be must first become what it is created to be. You were born a conqueror, overcoming so many odds, overcoming billions in competition to fertilize the egg, You are more than a conqueror at birth. Ah, but you must become more than a conqueror in life. For the word of God says, For we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Romans 8, 37. He that began a great work in you shall complete it. Philippians 1, 6. You began great. You must become great so that you can be completed great. Ah, are you with me? What you were born to be, you have to become. Come is the process. Be is the destination or destiny. God said, let there be, and there it became. Oh, that's good family. So become is the process that will take you to your purpose. Many of you know where you want to be, but first you have to be where you are. (laughs) What do you mean, man of God? Be content. Be satisfied. And be still to see where God is developing you to take you into your purpose. Hagar was sad and alone, yet she loved her husband, Abraham, and Ishmael with all that she knew how. 
Yet still, she was driven away to go to a foreign land and raise her only son by herself. But our God showed up and said to Haggai, I see you and I see the boy. This boy will be great in the earth and I shall provide for you and him. See, Satan wanted to see Haggai in disgrace, sent away by the father of her only son to survive in the wilderness. But God had other plans. He identified her and identified her son and declared that he will be great in the earth. Satan wants your reputation to bring you to disgrace. Ah, oh, but God wants your identity to bring you into purpose. The enemy wants to use your reputation to cause you to fall into disgrace. This is his trap. King Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? He's talking about reputation, knowing that reputation had nothing to do with his identity. Some say this prophet and others say that prophet or the next prophet. Ah, but prophet does not identify Christ as king. Oh, help me somebody. A prophet cannot have a kingdom. Only a king is qualified to have a kingdom. And King Jesus is the king of kings that brought the kingdom back to man in the earth. If the enemy can label you with a disgraceful reputation or one that disqualifies your identity, he thinks he's winning. Oh, but I love that God stepped in and declared to Peter, you are the Christ, the King, the Son of the living God. King David says in Psalm 25, 1, Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, God. But they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all the day long. So, beloved family, don't let anyone label you with a reputation that has nothing to do with who you are. Nothing to do with your identity that is imaged by your God. Disgrace is not your portion. False accusations may be levied against you, but you will not be brought to open shame. Remember, your reputation is what others say about you. Ah, but your identity in Christ is what God knows about you. Much love.